Okay, so here we are. We've made four holes in the ground and brought up our treasure and have laid out the profiles and we've carried them together. This is the one that was farthest up the hill near the summit. This was on the, the, the uh, foot slope or kind of off the shoulder into the foot slope. This is in the foot slope and this was down at the bottom of the slope in what is uh, almost a wetland uh, in that wooded area. So the difference in elevation here I think is probably uh, less than uh, four or five, well actually probably about three meters uh, from the hill down to here. Uh, so it's not a, not a very pronounced slope, but you can see it had a pronounced effect on the kind of soils that we find and, and expect to find. So some of these uh, differences in the soil we can predict, uh, and they're pretty reliably going to occur. So we already talked about this a little bit when we were making the augers, but uh, if you look at this, what are some of the changes? If you're going to say, what is changing as we go down the slope here? Uh, in the upper part of the soil, I think you can see we're getting generally darker colors. This has a little bit of really dark material here. This is quite a bit thicker. This is a lot darker, and then this is really dark down here. So the organic matter is increasing. And that is occurring in this part primarily because there's more moisture and therefore you get more plant growth and therefore you have more carbon coming in. But this one is right down at the bottom of the hill where all of the uh, muddy water that's eroded off the, the slope of this hill ends up and the water settles and is not flowing and so there's time for the silt and the clay to settle out. And so over probably millennia, uh, I imagine some of this happened since agriculture, but this is also something that happens under natural conditions. Uh, we have a layer of much finer material, and you can just see without me feeling it, just how chunky this is, how it holds together, so it must have much more silt and clay in it than this material, which is primarily sand. Okay. So one thing that's happened is we've got more plant growth, more organic matter, and because it's wetter, things decompose more slowly, so you have more carbon coming in, less carbon going out, so more carbon accumulates. And then on top of that, we have actual soil washing down the hill, which you can see evidence of from the last few rainfalls in the tire tracks, where we have this loose sand that's washed down the hill. Uh, and then by the time it gets off into the lowest position, the sand is dropped out and only the silt and clay in the muddy water is passed and that's been accumulating. So we have a fairly abrupt change in texture. It gets a little bit more clay as we go down the hill because of that process, but the big change is here where we have flowing water versus stagnant water on the surface. That is kind of water kind of pools there. So that's a pretty obvious change. Darker, deeper, thicker A horizons. Then we look at the bottom end, you can see some obvious changes too. Uh, it's pretty clear here at about um, 75 centimeters, I think this is, that we're into saturation, probably a little bit above that. But this is glistening wet. This is water table down here. Uh, it's also here, maybe a little bit deeper, about 90. And we really don't have the water table saturated conditions farther up the hill. There's probably water much deeper, although this is probably gets wet on some occasions because the iron has been dissolved off the sand. You know, this has got a lot of iron coatings. This is basically quartz sand, but this is red because of coatings of iron. And in this sand, it looks pretty much like beach sand because the iron has been washed away by being first chemically reduced under anaerobic conditions. So at the bottom end, we can see the water table is getting closer to the surface. Here it's below where we augered. Here it's about here. And, and here. Okay. And this, so we have a combination of things happening. The water table is closer to the surface. That means capillary flow will be moving up, and this part will be saturated because all the pores will be filled by capillary flow. We have a lot of carbon moving down because this is so high in organic matter. The trees are growing year round, the leaves are decaying, so there's lots of carbon inputs. So that combination of wet soils with the pores filled with water, so not much airflow in the soil, lots of carbon coming in to get the microbes going, is going to create these anaerobic conditions, which create really nice examples of what we call redoxymorphic features. In the old days, they used to just call these models, modeled colors. 
okay, but these are redoxymorphic features which are primarily de depletions, the gray color, where the iron has been reduced, and diffused away, and the orange, where the iron has precipitated and been oxidized uh, because it was a crack in the soil. Sometimes as the soil dries, the air goes down these cracks. Uh, sometimes it's because of roots of hydrophytic vegetation. So we have really nice examples of these redoxymorphic features. Uh, and this would be considered a glade horizon. You remember uh, we talked about a BT horizon in the previous field trip where the clay is accumulating, and this definitely has clay accumulating, but it's also uh, anaerobic, and so this would be a BTG horizon. This has some clay accumulating here too. This is pretty sticky compared to loose sand down here. Uh, it's not as pronounced, but this is just a BT horizon, it's not a G. A little bit of clay increase here and also there. So these are all altosols, but this is probably an aquault. This is, these two are probably hapudults, and this might be an aquacapudult. I haven't checked that classification, but the aquic would mean that it's wet, but not wet enough to be an aquault, where this is anaerobic and glade pretty much all the way to the surface. The glading is all the way up here. This is also gray with redoxymorphic features. So in uh, the lab manual we're asking you to model this and this could be used in any landscape as we go from the summit to the shoulder to the back slope uh, to the toe slope here. So we're going from the summit the shoulder to the back slope and the, and the toe slope. We're asking you to kind of draw these, so uh, you should maybe take a screenshot of this uh, and try to draw the horizons. Uh, this is something that's a little hard to do from just pictures because normally you want to do a lot of feeling, so I'll help you out with this a little bit. Let's, let's start with this one. I think we can clearly see this is a separate horizon because it's so full of so much darker and richer and organic matter. It's probably a very recent horizon. It's probably just formed in the last decade, a couple of decades, where they stopped plowing this. And then we're looking, we're, we're feeling for changes in texture. So it's getting a little harder to poke there. And now you have to ignore the little white areas. That's just from the soil drying off. We can get rid of those by spraying it with a little water. Whenever you do a color comparison, you want to be sure that you indicate whether it's a dry color or a wet color, uh, because you can see that the dry color is much whiter. It's much higher on the page. Okay. So for each of these horizons, once we designate them, we're going to want to feel the texture. You can already tell. I can hear this. It's got a lot of sand in it. Uh, yet it does hold together, so it's not a loamy sand. You, can, you couldn't make a ball that would... You could push it and hold together here, but you can't make much of a ribbon. So it's sort of on the border of sandy loam and loamy sand. It's way over in the corner of the triangle. And this goes down someplace to about feeling for a change in texture. Not much difference in color here. Probably was caused by plowing, and so really deep plowing might go down to about 30, 32 centimeters or so. Someplace in here there's a change. It's much denser and much more clay. So this is probably all an AP horizon, an A1 and then an AP. And here you can see there's quite a bit more clay in it. Still can't make a ribbon. It's a sandy loam, but it's moving up the triangle. So we have the triangle here. We're moving from something that's down in here, almost a loamy sand. We're moving up a little bit to a sandy loam that's got a little more clay. So as we go up this direction, we're going, we're going from, let's say, about uh, 5 or 10% clay up to maybe 15% clay or so, uh, which is enough to be a BT horizon. Remember, it's a 15% relative increase. So going from 5, 6% clay here between 5 and 10 percent clay. This is between more like 15 to 20 percent clay, not quite 20. So that's almost a doubling of the clay. So it's 
enough to be a B horizon. So that's a BT horizon. This continues, and then we can see a pretty abrupt change in color here. So that's either going to be a C horizon or a different BT horizon. I have to feel the texture to see. So it's very sandy. So the clay is accumulated to here. The BT horizon is stopping about there. So we get an A horizon here, BT there. Clearly we have kind of a BC horizon there. And then this, I would probably lump this pretty much together, although there were some, I think it got a lot, someplace down here got even sandier. That's pretty sandy. Here's where it changes. So there's a little transition horizon here. I could lump this together. So in, in soil, among soil scientists, uh, we have two groups of people, mentalities. We have uh, what they call lumpers and splitters. So those that like to see all the little differences and make lots of horizons, and those that say, ah, it's pretty close, we'll lump it together. And you get them together in a room, and you'll never get them to totally agree. It's a little bit like liberals and conservatives or something. They look at the same situation and see a different picture, right? But that's how I would divide that up. Here again, we have a recent horizon that's characteristic of all of these because these are all in the same vegetative. So they all have an A1, maybe a little thicker here. Uh, clearly the color is changing here. This is more of an E horizon because I don't think the clay is picked up yet. And the clay is picking up there. So there's a little bit of an E horizon. Clay is increasing here. Still sandy, but this is less clay in it. It's a weaker B horizon. I don't think it's got as much clay as that one, but it's still a BT horizon in through here. A BC horizon, and then again this. I think you'd have to divide this based on color, even though it's pretty sandy, a little bit more clay there. And you can see this is just pretty much moist sand from here. So this would be like a C, C1, C2, a BC, a B, an E, and there's the same AP, so it's not surprising that's at about the same depth because this is probably something that was caused by human beings taking a thin forested A horizon and mixing it together with a plow. Similar situation here, maybe going a little bit deeper, a little more clay. Again, the clay here is not because it formed in the soil, but because the clay is washed out down the hill. Some of the clay is beginning to settle out here, or at least the silt. Still a sandy loam, but definitely you can, you can just see from the way it holds together. Still can't make a ribbon out of it, but it's a higher clay content out there. Color change is someplace in here. There's the B horizon. This is this is probably a transition horizon, an E horizon, and then this has got a lot of clay in it, so that this is the B horizon here probably two of them. If we could see the structure, I think the structure would be different someplace in here. Uh, we can't see structure in this very well. But here, kind of the bottom of the B horizon. And this is pretty much wet sand material again. So this would be C horizon. It's all run together, so I'm not going to try to separate that into different horizons. So we have one about there, about there. Out there, out there. Maybe that's a bit of a D horizon. Hard to hard to tell the way we laid laid it out here. I mean, this one, this is obvious. There's a big change there. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if this was a, at some point a part of that same A horizon that when they cleared this land for farming in the 1700s, that somebody with a mule or horse came through here. Cloud it all up. This has clearly uh, been darkened a lot, this upper part, the A1, the O we left in the, in the forest. Now it didn't have much of, a, of an OE or an OA layer on it. It had loose leaves, but then 
mineral soil, so it was pretty uh, dramatically, there wasn't a lot of decomposed accumulation on the surface. Uh, so this is definitely a change between this and this. This is got a, going to have a G on it because it's so gray and glade. If we take the color book and we start looking at the color of this, we're probably down in the one column. It's like it's grayer than that, so it's down here. It's like a four over one, so that's glade. So this would be probably an AG, and then we have a, a BTG. This is higher in clay, so now we can make a ribbon. Clay is accumulated here. Some of it's moved down, and some of it's washed down the hill, but. We can make a ribbon out of this. This is not a clay soil, but it's higher in clay. You can see you make a pretty good ribbon. It's probably a sandy clay loam, I think. It's enough to be in a clay loam layer. So we have enough clay now that we've moved up out of the sandy loam, probably into the sandy clay loam layer. Definitely not in, in, the, in the clay yet. That'll be in the neighborhood of, feels like, you know, 25 to 30 percent clay. That's how you make a, a ribbon. See, this is kind of nice. The soil is really moist, so it's a lot harder to do when you start out with dry soil in the, in the lab. But since it's already moist, you can just squeeze a nice ribbon here and see how long it will grow before it breaks off. That looked like long enough to be a, a clay loam. Okay. So we can definitely, so we've got a, a BTG horizon here, probably another one. I think the colors are changing. A little hard to tell the way it's laid out in the soil pit. I think it would be more obvious. Uh, this is much sandier than this. So here's a boundary right here. This is very sandy. I can't make any, any ribbon at all out of this. So don't let the colors fool you. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, you can see the texture. You, you really can't. You have to feel it. This has got a lot more clay in it. Still has a pickup of sand, but it's in the clay loam region. So we definitely have a change here and here. Two different horizons, someplace in here, a little thin one. This is still a PT probably ends here, and this goes into a C. It would have a G on it, it's because it's glade, it'd be a CG. This is pretty sandy material down here, not much clay. So these probably would divide these into a number of C horizons, so. But the water table is all the way up in here, and this is saturated. So right now the water table is here. We've had a very dry year. A lot less rain than usual, so the uh, in a wet year, I think we would have seen water on the surface there. So that's kind of a quick rundown. Uh, when you're doing this exercise, we like to uh, record the colors for each one of these horizons. Uh, this is pr pretty easy when it's just one color. It gets a little more complicated when you have several colors, and then you have to take a chunk of soil and match more than one color. So the gray is pretty close to a seven over one. If you look at the gray on that, but the red on that is way out here. Oh, probably a six over eight. Or maybe even a, a five over eight. You can see the red matches pretty close to that, but the gray is down here. So that you would, you would describe that depending on what was what had the, the majority of the soil. So this is almost even, but if we say this is mostly gray with some red spots on it, then the matrix of the soil would be the the seven over one, seven point five wire seven over one, with uh, concentrations, iron concentrations that are seven point five wire probably. 5 over 6, or maybe even a little redder than that. Might have to go over to the next page. Yeah, I think it... 
probably closer to this page, 5YR. So that we do this description with the colors for everything, feel the texture. You can estimate the percent clay once you feel the texture by how far up or down you are on the curve. We can estimate the percent sand uh, in some of these uh, that are pretty sandy uh, by taking a, a little pea-sized ball of soil and making a little puddle of water in our hand and then smooshing it around and this makes the grains of sand sort of separate so you have to have in mind the size of that that original chunk of soil and you're trying to estimate what part of it is sand the part that pours off is probably mostly silt stays in the suspension the part that's left here is sand I think you can see that this is a pretty high percentage of sand someplace around 85 90 percent sand if we I suggest you either bring a rag so it's useful to bring a cloth with you if you don't have a cloth you can be sloppy like me and uh, use your jeans uh, if we wanted to do that for one of these horizons uh, this has got a lot of clay in it right but it also has a lot of sand and I can hear it I always like to listen to it if I can hear it then I'm pretty sure it's got sand in the name so I again can take a, a pea-sized piece of this nice and wet and smear it around it's a little harder to do because it has more clay in it make a soup out of it and you can see the sand grains standing up they're visible but the clay and silt are too small to see so they're just kind of part of this liquid of the soup you can pour off the liquid of the soup and see what you have left it's still there's clearly a lot more silt and clay here, but you still have a lot of sand, and we're probably in some place in the range of 60-70% you know, sand. And then we estimate the clay. So if we know the sand and we know the clay, we can then estimate the silt. So if we're 60 or 70% sand, we're someplace along this line. this out try to make a ribbon out of it see how long that is before it breaks and how long is that about five centimeters or so look on our chart can you make a ribbon longer than two and a half centimeters definitely that's closer to five say yes can you make a ribbon that's longer than five well we're kind of I'd say yes, but just barely. Uh, kind of on the border. It's breaking at about five. So if it was distinctly longer than five, but you could hear the gritty sound, you'd say yes, then it would be a sandy clay. If it's less than five, and you can hear the gritty sound, right, then it would be a sandy clay loam. I think we're still in the sandy clay loam, which is to say I think we're someplace around here. I doubt that we're up into there. So we, we would do this for all of the horizons, write a complete description. Uh, and then we can start thinking about, once we, we, we know this about the soil, we can start thinking about uh, some interpretations. We can uh, say something about the taxonomy. We already said, said something about that. This is probably a, an aqualt. Uh, there are questions in the lab manual for you to think about. For instance, if you were going to build a house and you had to put a septic drain field in to take care of sewage water, you want, you want a soil that when you flush the toilet, the water goes through the septic tank and the dirty water goes through pipes and it goes through holes and pipes and it's supposed to soak into the ground where the microbes can treat it and the clay can absorb the pollutants. But it has to be able to flow into the ground. So these would be uh, very suitable. In fact, uh, if you put them down here, uh, if you've had the pipes buried down in this very sandy stuff, it may even be so poor, uh, so permeable that it might not clean it very well. It might be a pollution issue that your 
your disease and germs and pollutants that you flush down the toilet might move over to the next house where they might have a well. So that's uh, also a consideration, but, but these others should be pretty good. Now this one would not be suitable, uh, and this one would be questionable because of the groundwater, so you'd be flushing right into the groundwater and that would be going to streams. Uh, you can make other interpretations like the frequency of flooding. Uh, probably the one in the woods floods most years. I would, I would guess you have some flooding. Uh, so there's lots of different interpretations that you can make once you kind of have the basic understanding. Uh, we also are asking you to think about how these soils formed in terms of the five soil forming factors. You, uh, we've studied earlier that the kind of soil we find in a particular place, whether it's here or Hawaii or China or wherever, uh, is due to the influence of the geologic parent material that was either the rock that was here or something that was dumped. So in our case, this is uh, sandy coastal plain sediments that are, in this case, millions of years old. Uh, it's a function of the climate. In our case, we have a humid, temperate climate. Uh, it's a function of the vegetation. In our case, the trees that we see here, mixed uh, hardwood forest is probably what was here for many thousands of years. Uh, it's also a function of organisms, primarily the vegetation. We see the effect of the recent vegetation in this A horizon and the overall effect of the trees for thousands of years. And then finally, the length of time. These are quite old soils. Uh, if we went a few hundred, uh, well, 500 kilometers farther north into New York, we would be in, in soils that were only 10,000 years old because the glaciers had receded then. But these soils are probably up to millions of years old, so they've had a long time to go through weathering processes. And so that's one of the reasons why the kinds of clays and things like that are different here. So. Those are all things that we can uh, talk about. The topography is the, is the fifth one. And the main thing we're focusing on here, because all those other conditions, the climate, the parent material, the vegetation and everything are pretty similar. The main difference here as we go across these is the topography. So that's the fifth soil forming factor. And these are all interacting. As you can see, the topography affects how the water interacts, what kind of vegetation there is, etc. Et okay. So I think we've uh, covered most of the, the principles here and uh, hopefully you can get some good uh, images of this and do a little bit of more detailed studying on your own. I always encourage you, if you can, to uh, do this in your backyard. Uh, probably should call Miss Utility first to make sure you're not, uh, if you're in an urban area, to make sure you're not hitting a gas line or a water line. I've had that experience myself. Uh, <laughs> I was doing this out in the middle of a farm field one time, but uh, unbeknownst to me, there was an irrigation pipe. It was a center pivot irrigation, and there was a buried pipe about three feet deep bringing water to that, and sure enough, that's what I hit. <laughs> so I, it was quite expensive. I made a hole in the pipe, or at least I made a nick in the pipe, so the farmer was uh, concerned it might, might burst. So we had to get a backhoe and dig it up and replace a section of pipe. So um, you'd like to know where you're digging first, but I'd encourage you to go out with a shovel, if you have a shovel, and at least look at the upper part. And if you can get a soil auger, either borrow one from your instructor, uh, or you could even buy one. They're not real cheap. They are a few hundred dollars for the cheapest ones. But if you're interested in doing this, uh, investigating a piece of land, it's certainly a good investment because you need something to open a window to what's going on below our feet. Otherwise, you're just sort of blind like most people are. They look out and they think it's all one kind of soil. Okay, well, we'll see you next time. I wish you were here, but uh, this is the best we can do under the circumstances.